Um, well, the rain stopped. A um, bit of blue sky right in the distance, so hopefully um, it won't be too wet today. Welcome to the shooting show. This week, I think will probably be the last chance I get on the autumn drill. Uh, it's a field here. We have shot two or three weeks, well, probably three or four weeks ago now. Um, but they're still on it. They're still finding a bit of grub. Richard, look there, look. They're still finding a bit of grub on here, so we're just on the corner here. As we stand now looking out, the wind's coming down here. So I've gone purposely on the corner. Hopefully, as the day goes on, I'm going to have a few decoys out on that field, the rest of them out here, and hopefully we can entice them to come round, swing round, and come into the pattern. That's one of the reasons I'm still here, look. Still picking a bit here. Pick the woody out. Well, um, we're in what little flight line there is about here. We're in the middle, of, but the only problem we've got is we've got that big yellow thing uh, sitting right there that's going to be in our face virtually all day. Um, so, just one of the things that we've just got to put up with. Uh, I've got a sort of fairly good hide that I can get sort of like down low enough to get, un you know, get underneath it. But it's hopefully it's to, we've got to spot the pigeons first before they can spot us.
go out, get fed up with these pigeons. I just, just felt that I just needed to move literally all the 20 yards or 10 yards um, down the hedge. Because we've got pigeons just coming up that side of us, not quite making the pattern and making it very difficult for me to shoot at. So we're just moving and I hate moving, even if it's just 10 yards down into the field. Well, we're in the middle of a very frustrating day. Uh, I've just moved the hide literally only more than 10 yards down the field, down the hedge, because they were coming to my left and I couldn't get a shot of them. I've moved the lofting poles to the left of me to try and get them in. But the bottom line of it is really, they just do not want to know. I don't know how else to describe it. They're coming past me, they're going over top of me, um, and I just can't get them to come down close enough for a shot. But we'll soldier on and we'll see what the rest of the day brings. Well, we just tried out, trying a few other things. We've got uh, a bit of a pattern building up here. We've got a couple of lofting poles at the top there in the, in the tree. I've just put two out the back there. I've got some over there, about four or five pigeons out there, trying to give these pigeons something to look forward to, to look to come into, instead of just keep going straight over the top or just to the wider. So we'll have another go.
have one decoy look. Good boy, good boy, good boy, good boy, good boy, here, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Hey. Well, that concludes another day. Um, a hard fought um, 55 pigeons and seven crows. Um, and how the day's gone, I'm really pleased to get that number. Um, we got here this morning. There's a lot of pigeons feeding on this field. They're still picking up from the fresh drilling. They're still picking up stuff from when we had the fire come through. But there's a lot of wood pigeons out here. We walked them off. A lot of them went behind us. We watched the flight line. We ended up going right on the corner of the hedge there. Um, but I was very sort of like soon realized that the pigeons were, were coming up here and just drifting out and I couldn't get a shot off at them. So I just literally moved from the corner of the hedge 10 meters down to here, where that just gave me an opportunity to shoot at anything going by. Um, Quarter past three this afternoon was the first pigeon that actually decoyed into the pattern. Everything else was shot coming over, going wide, going this side. Um, I don't know what's the matter with these pigeons here, but they are very decoy shy. They'd be coming up here. They just sort of get to the decoys, just on the edge of the decoys and just drift out, um, going out to their mates other side of the field there. But as it happens, we, we carried on and gone through it all. Um, I'll probably be on Strictly Come Dancing, all the pirouettes I've done in the hide um, with these feral pigeons, which have been an absolute nightmare today. Um, but we finished up with 62 head and on the day, I'm really happy with that. <laughs> Go Drake, go Drake. Good boy. Go get back, get back, go get back. It's been a hard fought day today. I hope you enjoy watching the results on the shooting show.
This evening I'm out testing Infrared's new Gemini thermal binoculars. It's a lovely evening, I've come out to one of my favourite bits of ground which is brilliant for fallow stalking. Being in the middle of August it's only fallow and roebucks that are in season so there's not that many row on this ground so I'm really looking out for a fallow buck and generally on here it's more does than anything else. Nevertheless we should be able to find a few deer to have a look at through the new Gemini binoculars. So I can see the Gemini has been popular with um, stalkers especially because not only have you got that thermal aspect in there where it allows you to pick out deer nice and easily in woodland and other situations where it would normally be quite difficult with standard glass but you've also got the option you can swap it to a coloured day screen so once you've found your deer you can identify whether it's a buck or a doe and you can also assess what condition it is. For a power source, these thermal binoculars run on two 18650 batteries which are located just in this little compartment on the side here. This is definitely an advantage because 18650 batteries, they're cheap, they're easy to get hold of and it's no bother just to carry an extra set or two in your pocket. Now a couple of batteries should last you for a normal night's foxing or an evening out stalking but as I say it's no bother just to carry another set in your pocket and um, should they die on you then it's easy just to swap them out in the field. So there's actually quite a lot of features on these that I really like. Firstly I like the little focus wheels which are just located either side of the eyepiece there. So you've got one on the left there which does the focus for your uh, thermal side of things and then the other side does your day screen and your night vision mode. Another nice thing is you can actually adjust the eyepiece on these um, that's one thing I have found before with other thermal binoculars is you can't move the eyepieces apart to suit your face whereas with these they do just slide backwards and forwards like that so yeah another nice little, uh, nice little feature and of course the built in rangefinder which I absolutely love on thermal binoculars The light's just starting to fade but I've just spotted a few fallow that are in this wood here but they were probably between 50 and 100 yards from me deep in the wood um, and uh, I, I could see them quite clearly through the thermal I could see bits of them between the trees because this is a really thick wood here and um, I, could, I could pick them out there but well they've got sharper eyes than even the thermal and spotted me and started making their way back through the wood so really what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a deer out on the edge of the wood feeding on the, on the uh, field here that I can knock over um, and uh, hopefully get a bit of nice footage for you guys as well. But the chances of getting a shot through that wood are low and impossible. Okay, so I've decided to get in one of these high seats. It's got a nice view over a big field here. And um, we've probably still got about half an hour or so, maybe a little bit longer until it's dark. So I'm hoping just in this time we might get something to walk out. Right, so I can see several deer coming through the trees just to my right. They're probably only 50, 60 metres from me. Um, but they're the other side of some trees, so 
there's several there in the next field but quite often they come through these trees and now onto this field so I'm just going to wait and hopefully one will come out and it'll be a bug before dark I know very slim odds but you never know The Gemini are various modes including white hot, black hot, red and fusion as well as thermal overlay and night vision options and even in low light still give a very good colour image. The Gemini binoculars also have a very clever thermal overlay feature you can use over the colour screen. This helps you locate game better in the colour mode. The thermal image is still remarkably sharp even at longer distances, with these deer stood out in the open some 300 metres away. Right, so we had some deer coming out at the end, it was um, pretty much after dark or just before dark and we had a couple of uh, does and youngsters come out in front and behind the ones that are out in front were probably a good two to three hundred meters out there and then we had a big group that came out and stood out in the field and they were definitely out about 300 meters again I was using the rangefinder in these um, I had a fox as well on the edge of the wood here that disappeared into the wood uh, some deer behind uh, what else do we have oh and then of course we had the uh, fox as well which came out behind here and I was able to uh, turn around shoot over the back of the high seat and uh, get a shot on that which was about 80 metres or something so uh, at least I didn't sort of blank the evening I didn't get a bark but never mind we at least saw some deer and got to have a little look at the infrared uh, Geminis now I'm going to be using these for future episodes on the shooting show and shooting country TV so uh, I'm sure I'll um, get to know them a bit better, find out all the little uh, tricks and things that they do because I'm still learning, I haven't had them all that long so I'll just rush straight into them and play around with them uh, but they're, they're very easy to, to suss out um, I haven't read the instructions which is, is pretty typical for me, that is always a last resort but I haven't had any bother with coming out with these and being able to use them in the field so all in all I reckon these are very nicely made good solid bit of kit that's um, 
certainly going to uh, compete with um, any other thermal uh, binoculars on the market if not raise the bar so yeah if you're interested in a decent thermal and you're looking to go down the binocular route certainly have a look at the infrared Geminis If you aren't a member of BASC, it's time to join now. BASC, looking after your sport, looking after you.